This morning, arrest warrants have been issued for at least four people after this brawl in Montgomery, Alabama. The brawl that you just watched a snippet of happened over the weekend on Saturday in Montgomery, Alabama. And authorities have issued arrest warrants following that weekend brawl. Now, before we get to the details on the warrants and the individuals involved in the brawl and how it all ended, why don't we take a look at this next video that gives you a few more details. Witnesses say it started when this crew member in the white uniform tried to move a pontoon boat being used by a group of white men. The boat was blocking a large river boat from docking. Those guys who parked there were told not to leave it there and they left it there. A man confronts the dock worker and then... Several people join in, outnumbering the crew member. This woman kicking the man while he was down. You just felt so helpless for that man. like. There's five or six of them on him. That's when witnesses, most if not all of them black, rushed to the man's aid. One even swimming to the dock to join in. The fight turning into a full on melee. The violence escalating. One man was detained after using a chair as a weapon. Police confirm these videos are part of their investigation. Now, the man who used the chair as a weapon has not been issued a warrant. However, authorities do want to bring him in for questioning. The individual that you see swimming to the dock worker's aid is actually a teenager, a 16 year old by the name of Aaron. And he's being referred to as Black Aquaman. <laughs> and so, understandably, people are celebrating the individuals who showed up to protect the dock worker. He's the teenager being hailed a hero for swimming to the rescue in the midst of that ugly riverfront brawl. That boy swimming his over The teen leaps off a riverboat after seeing his co-worker being beaten on the dock. The 16-year-old is now being dubbed a real-life Aquaman. On social media, he is a sensation. The guy that jumped in the water to help, yeah. they're now calling him Jim Michael Phelps. Jim Michael <laughs> Phelps, I heard Michael B. Phelps. A family spokesperson praises him as showcasing courage beyond his years. Video of the Riverfront Rumble is being seen around the world, and we're learning more today about how it all started and why it erupted into a pitched battle with racial overtones. Passengers on this riverboat were getting ready to go ashore after an evening cruise in Montgomery, Alabama. That's the first mate who's gone ashore to remove a pontoon boat blocking the riverboat's dock. You hear the captain over the PA system suddenly say, black pontoon boat, move your boat. Krista Owen shot this video as the first mate tried to persuade a group of men to move their boat. That's when one knucklehead attacks him. <laughs> And you can see him toss his hat away as he gets ready to fight back. But within seconds, he is hopelessly outnumbered and is taking a brutal beating. What were you thinking when all of a sudden you see the first punch being thrown? It was breaking my heart and all of us, of course. Now we're like, I can't believe we have to watch this poor man you know, be beat and we can't do anything about it. He's defenseless. He's defenseless. The riverboat captain spoke to a local radio station. It was difficult for me to sit there in the wheelhouse watching him being attacked. And I, the whole time I'm on the PA, stop, stop. Yeah. When the riverboat yeah. finally docks, some passengers and crew get involved and there's a free for all. Woo. This woman was thrown into the water. Oh. Look at that guy hitting people over the head with the folding chair again and again. Oh my God! He's going to jail. Until he's finally overpowered by cops. The fight is angering Mayor Stephen Reed. This is not indicative of our community at all. Roll, tide, roll. All right, before I get started, I'm giving all praise to the Heavenly Father in the name of His only begotten Son, the Holy Spirit. Kahalah, Yimla, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Wawah HaKadash. A double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect brethren, faithfully and diligently preaching His word with fear and trembling. Shalom to the believers that subscribe and listen to this truth wholeheartedly through the Spirit and power, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. And uh, this is going to be a response to the uh, <clears throat> what they call in the Alabama Riverboat Brawl, all right? <laughs> and uh, I saw this video about a day ago. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, <sighs> it's quite hilarious, all right? <clears throat> 
and it's uh you know in a sense it's prophecy you know uh on a lower level okay and uh <clears throat> i'm gonna get some scriptures but pretty much i just wanted to do something quick a uh, little commentary all right on this uh clip that i got here lord will it, it didn't you know clip by the youtube police all right <clears throat> but this is uh pretty much the latest news uh viral event <clears throat> that just recently took place if you hadn't already seen it all right uh it's a brawl you know a classic brawl between esau and jacob man and uh before i get started all right, I'm going to get right into it with this scripture. I'm going to open up with this scripture, right? Classic scripture, Genesis 25, verse 19. And uh, I'm going to read through uh, 23 to highlighted areas, okay? So this is Genesis 25 and 19. And these are the generations of Isaac, Salakia, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, the wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Pandanaram. Okay. Pandanaram. <clears throat> the sister to Laban the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord Yahweh for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord Yahweh was entreated of him. And Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord Yahweh, and the Lord Yahweh said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. <clears throat> now in this video, and fair use by the way, all right, this video is uh, for educational purposes only, not intended to, uh, you know, acquire or accumulate any type of monetary gain. All right. <clears throat> educational, biblical educational uses only. Again, the one people shall be stronger than the other. And in this video, you're going to see a clear case of who's the stronger people. So I'm going to let it play and uh, commentate a bit. So it's going to start off with Jake jumping off the riverboat. All right, young Jake. And you can tell Jake really don't know how to swim, man. Jake probably ain't never had no swimming lessons, but let's just check it out. And uh, <clears throat> this young 16-year-old, they, they're starting to uh, deem him the hero hero of the whole scene, man. But he clearly has some type of uh, martial arts training, as you see, once he finally makes it across uh, the river to the dock. So let's check it out. Salak. He's the teenager being hailed a hero for swimming to the rescue in the midst of that ugly riverfront brawl. So you can tell the team how leaps slow off a riverboat after off seeing his co-worker being beaten on there. the dock. Really the 16-year-old is now being dubbed a real-life Aquaman. On social media, he is a sensation. The guy that jumped in the water to help, yeah. they're now calling him Jim Michael Phelps. Jim Michael <laughs> Phelps. I heard Michael B. Phelps. A family spokesperson praises him as showcasing courage beyond his years. Video of the Riverfront Rumble is being seen around the world, and we're learning more today about how it all started and why why it erupted into a pitch battle with racial overtones. Passengers on this river. It's prophecy. All right. It's prophecy, man. <clears throat> it, it was always uh, said in the spirit. All right. For these two nations. All right. Uh, to struggle, to fight, to war with one another. Genesis 25 and 22. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord Yahweh. And the Lord Yahweh said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two men of people shall be separated from thy bowels, 
and the one people shall be stronger than the other. So from generation to generation, there will always be a battle between these two fraternal twins, Jacob and Esau, and one nation would always prove to be stronger than the other nation. The nation that would be found the weaker, all right, would be Esau, which was the elder that came out first. And the Lord said, the elder shall serve the younger. All right. And that's the problem. This whole dispute was because uh, these proud Edomites, you know, they didn't want to move their little riverboat over to the side. Okay. Because it was a big boat full of jakes pulling in. And they were too proud. Okay, and because of that privilege, all right, because they are in their kingdom, they feel the sense of entitlement. And till this day, they refuse to uh, bow down and bend the knee and serve Jake. <laughs> Point blank, period. But let's keep watching. Uh, we're getting ready to go ashore after an evening cruise in Montgomery, Alabama. That's the first mate who's gone ashore to remove a pontoon boat the blocking captain. the riverboat's dock. You hear the captain over the PA system suddenly say, Black pontoon boat, move your boat. Krista Owen shot this video as the first mate tried to persuade a group of men to move their boat. <laughs> That's when Classic one knucklehead Jacob attacks him. <laughs> and you can see him toss his hat away as he gets ready to fight back. <laughs> but with now, if you watch... Uh, as you watch this skirmish break out, all right, as you watch this, you know, start to ignite, which this is the co-captain. The captain was on the uh on the PA system, you know, telling telling Esau to move his shit, all right, because the bigger boat was pulling in. And again, it was a boat full of jakes. All right. So you know Esau, you know, his pride ain't allowing him to submit. Uh, he's like, hell no, nah, I ain't moving out the way for these niggas. So he's having a conversation trying to get them to move their uh, pontoon boat. And then you see this this younger Jake, which looks like he could be, you know, a younger brother. But you can tell they related or close friends or something. He called himself coming to the rescue. Now, the co-captain, you're going to see, he's handling this Edomite. He's going to catch him by the throat with like a <laughs> undertaker type chokehold, man. Check it out. In seconds, he is hopelessly outnumbered and is taking a boat. They That's when one scene. knucklehead attacks him. <laughs> and you can see him toss his hat away as he gets ready to fight back. <laughs> you know, Jake got to show out. Look how Jake, Jake just tosses his hat like he know he finna beat the shit out this white boy, man. <laughs> and once... Uh, they see Esau losing this battle because Jake is about to put this man in a, in a, in a, in a, in, like I said, an Undertaker style chokehold, man. I don't know if it's going to show the whole thing, but you'll see before it goes off, he has him by the throat before it skips. All right. The edit skips the whole clip, but there are several, you know, viral videos. You can go back and watch the whole thing, but, uh, and a lot of the videos that's out there, especially the ones on mainstream media, they don't show the graphic images of Esau getting his ass pummeled. Okay, but this is the one, and this is the reason why I chose this one, where you see that uh, Jake outpowers Esau easily. Okay, but the, at the beginning of this outbreak, the co-captain gets jumped pretty bad, man. And this is this is uh, what's escalating right now. But towards the end, you're going to see what the outcome is. <laughs> and, and that's prophetic. But within seconds, he is hopelessly outnumbered and is taking a brutal beating. What were you thinking we when all of a sudden you see the first mice. punch being thrown? It was breaking my heart and all of us, of course. Now we're like, I can't believe we have to watch this poor man. 
you know, be beat, and we can't do anything about it. He's defenseless. He's defenseless. The riverboat captain spoke to a local radio station. It, is. it was difficult for Hell me to sit there in the wheelhouse watching him being attacked. And that's when they the whole time I'm on the PA, stop, bomb stop. Yeah! When the riverboat finally docks, some passengers and crew get involved, and there's a free. Now you start to see Jake's, all right, jumping off the boat. You see the Jake's jumping off the boat. Okay, and this is after the uh, the young 16-year-old Jake, which they deemed a hero, had already swam over, which they're going to show that too, right? Which, matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this whole clip in the beginning of this video without my commentary so you can see it without any breaks. But I just wanted to, you know, speak on it and, uh, you know, add a few scriptures for, you know, true edification because, you know, us brothers that uh, understand prophecy, we know the spirit behind this uh, situation, okay, behind this outbreak. But let me shut up and let, let this part play, man. It's, it's about to get juicy. Roll, tie, roll. <laughs> For all. This woman was thrown into the water. Roll, tie, roll. Look at that guy hitting people over the head with the folding chair roll, again tie, and again. Roll. Oh, my God. He's going to jail. <laughs> Until he's finally overpowered by cops. Let's go, Jake. The fight is angering Mayor Stephen Reed. This is not indicative of our community at all. <laughs> Yep, so. Anyway, uh, let's get some scriptures, man. All right? Let's get some scriptures. So, <clears throat> like I said, I'll play the whole clip from the beginning. Uh, in the beginning so you can see it without the commentary like i said i just want to speak on this real quick and get a few precepts so according to scripture all right oh uh, we at this man's end okay and he's losing uh his kingdom he's losing his power man and uh on a physical level esau can't do nothing with Jake, okay? Edom can't handle the raw, uh, pure strength in hand to hand overall. Now don't get me wrong, it's some it's some Edomites out there, man. Don't 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 get beside yourself. Cause there's some Edomites out there, you know, they've been trained in different, you know, forms of martial arts, whether it's uh you know, uh, karate, you know, uh, wrestling, jujitsu. Hey, it's some Edomites out there that know some shit. But just on a straight up, you know, non trained, no type of uh, martial art training or fighting uh, background. Esau Edom don't stand a goddamn chance, man. Thus said the Lord. The Lord said Jacob would be stronger than Esau. Mentally, physically, and spiritually. All right, and this is ultimately going to lead, okay, the spirit that Jacob has is ultimately going to lead to the end of Esau's world. This is 2nd Ezra's. On six and seven. All right. <clears throat> We're going to read through nine. I'm gonna put some light on it that makes sense. There it is. This is a uh, second. There's a six starting at seven through nine. Then answered I and said, What shall be the part and the son of the times, or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. 
all right? And this is symbolic of the nation of Israel, the seed of Jacob, bringing down the seed of Esau, all right, Edom, all right, bringing an end to the world of these Edomites, all right? And how is it going to happen uh, before it ever uh, happens on a physical level? Because physically, uh, we can't beat this man in his kingdom because he's not going to fight fear. He's going to use the one and only blessing that he was ever given by our forefather Isaac, and that's the sword. He has the military, you know, and uh, this had to be the spirit for that uh, brawl to break out and nobody got shot. No guns were involved. You know, it wasn't, uh, which it could have been staged. You know, who, who knows? It might have been some type of false flag. It could be a distraction. But nevertheless, because most of the time, Edomites, especially on boats, they got fucking guns, man. Okay? They got guns. Now, I don't know what the gun laws are in Alabama. I assume that they're probably pretty strict. But nevertheless, going back to the spirit, this was a clean cut brawl. All right. You know, it wasn't uh which you know they, they say it's graphic, but I mean pretty much, you know, in today's time, you would have seen some knives, some guns, you know, it, it would have got to the point to we wouldn't even be able to watch this. So this pretty much was just Besides the man that uh, bashed the Edomite, the Shedomite over the head and the Edomite over the head with the chair. I mean, it was just hand-to-hand -hand combat. Which again, in a battle of hand-to-hand -hand combat, Edom can't fuck with Jake, man. Thus said the Lord. <laughs> now, you know, the fact that it wasn't any... Uh, you know, the fact that it wasn't any uh, violent weaponry uh, on the scene is kind of fishy to me, you know. So, uh, that's uh, something to take note of. But nevertheless, this was a clean uh, brawl and a display of the spirit of Jake being superior in strength. All right, to Esau Edom. And they thought they was just going to run up on, uh, you know, the, the riverboat co-captain Jake and, and just, you know, beat the shit out of him. And the rest of the Jakes was going to stand by. But see, the spirit of Jake is being roused up, man. Okay, Jake fed up with Esau Edom, you know, thinking he can just beat the shit out of us and, you know, Nobody do nothing about it. You know, we just stand by and watch. See, this is the beginning of uh, those prophecies of civil unrest and sedition among men. Because even if you watch other clips, there were a couple of Edomites that were trying to aid Jake, the co-captain. And the uh, Edomites that started the shit, you know, they was shit whooping the Edomites that was coming to help Jake. You know, they was springing back on his ass. Okay? But nevertheless, Jake is on Esau's ass. And before it ever gets to the point to where we can get a physical victory, mentally and spiritually, Jake is going to prevail. All right? So, uh, verse 8 and 9. And nine again, and he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right, so we at the end of the end of Esau's reign. All right, and uh, we're pressing upon the dominion of the nation of Israel. Okay. And what's prophesied to happen, okay, when we 
get the kingdom, all right? When we get on the throne, all right? Isaiah 14, 1 and 2. For the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh, will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. The strangers is talking about uh, the Israelite foreigners, all right? The, the, the scattered seed of Israel, okay? Those that don't know that they're Israelites, okay? And they shall cleave to the house of of Jacob, though so those strangers are going to come back into the fold. That great awakening is going to come to the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of their heritage, knowing that they are of the seed of Jacob, that they are Israelites according to the Bible. Okay, this dealing with that great awakening. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord Yahweh for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. All right. So even from uh, the womb, Esau, Edom was oppressing Jacob. Okay. But Jacob rose up. Jacob rose up to power. And that's why when Esau and Jacob came out of the womb, the heel of Esau was being held back by Jacob because Jacob is the rightful heir to the throne. Jacob is uh, the true firstborn of the Lord. All right. So uh, let's get uh, the next precept. Right. We'll get two more. We'll close this out. <clears throat> you know, this is always a beautiful thing to see. All right, being in this truth, whenever you see Esau Edom taking the L, which on a physical standpoint, he rarely takes L's unless it's in sporting events. All right. Uh, <laughs> you hardly ever see him. Uh, take the L on this level and I and I you know I assume that you know any uh, charges that get uh, pressed upon those Edomites they'll be dropped he'll, he'll get some type of lawyer you know they'll find some type of way to justify them escalating that situation into a brawl in the meantime you know in any other case if it was Jake that started the shit, Jake would have been in jail. Another thing to look at, to consider that this might have very well been a staged event, is that the fact that there were police on site, you know, uh, standing on the dock while all this shit was going down. But nevertheless, all right, hey, it is what it is. So we saw what we saw. And we're going to filter it through the spirit. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that lead it into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kill it with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. All right. And, uh, you know, the men of the Lord are the true saints. You know, the hopeful elect in this time. Okay, uh, that's what we are patiently waiting on. Okay, we're waiting on payback. We're waiting on uh, real reparations, okay? And this is all biblical, all right? It's biblical that the Lord uh, pays Esau back for his perpetual hatred, all right? For his uh, oppression that he's... he's uh, his genocide, his rape, robbery, and murder that he's committed against the Lord's chosen people, the nation of Israel. All right. Which Israel, okay, consists of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Hispanics. All right. And wherever you are scattered amongst these other nations, okay, and you may very well look like the other nations. It isn't solely based upon 
uh, the color of your skin. It, it really has nothing to do with the color of your skin. It's all about the seed, all right, of your father. So we'll end on this, Psalms 149, 5 through 9. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. And what you just saw was a display of punishment, all right, being executed and vengeance being executed upon the people of Edom. All right, because among uh, all these heathen nations that are on the face of the earth, nobody has committed, uh, you know, more atrocities against Jake than Esau. Again, I read verse 7, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Okay, and the scriptures say, let the saints... Be joyful in doing this. All right. And you see in the uh in the video, you hear the Jake lady, you know, she's she's like a, the biggest cheerleader back there cheering on Esau Edom getting his ass whooped, man. So that she's in the right spirit. See, we supposed to be looking to see and uh you know gl glorying and, and, and joyful to see. Esau Edom getting his goddamn ass whipped just as he was glorying as he was whooping our ass just as he's glorying and oppressing us and shooting us down in the streets and locking us up throwing away the key today verse 8 to bind their kings with chains and the nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written this honor have all his saints praise ye the Lord Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. Kahalah, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Chaha, Kodash, Kwam, Yasharala. Abab, Abab, rise Israel, destroy confusion. Shalom, Labakayim. Peace to the lay. We didn't hit the weapon, Danny Glover. This fish is telling the hunters, no, we coming. It's different. Hand to the plow with my brothers. We get it. Putting up curses on the others. They bitches. Them and us are different. This is separation. I clean with my brothers. It's a congregation. Praying that I'm one of the numbers that getting nominated. I provide the side. We accommodated. accommodated. We didn't hit the weapon, Danny Glover. This fish is telling the hunters, no, we coming. It's different. Hand to the plow with my brothers. We get it. Putting up curses on the others. They bitches. Them and us are different. This is separation. I clean with my brothers. It's a congregation. Praying that I'm one of the numbers that getting nominated.